I just didn't expect those penguins to be so horny. This movie is very horny. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, kids' movies like to sneak in a lot of things for the adults. But there were... I could count ten times over Endless. how many. Yeah, I couldn't count. Yeah, exactly. Hey, like, hi. <laughs> what's up? Welcome to the swamp. It's our podcast, and it's an acronym. Stands for some whack ass movie podcasting, and we are in the middle of Dara December. Oh my god! Thank you so much once again. I have been given free reign to do whatever the fuck I want this month and pick all of the movies, and. To sort of lead you down the winding path that Mm -hmm. leads us to happy feet. Please. Is that I was thinking about, like, you know, sort of picking four movies that were sort of all different from each other Mm -hmm. that I was excited to talk about. And the new trailer for Furiosa came out. Yes. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, we, I'm so excited for that. We are going to have to cover Mad Max, Fury Road. I'm shocked we haven't yet. At some point on this podcast. And I was like, I should pick that. And I was like, ah, it's kind of like a little similar to some of the other ideas I was having. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe we can cover Mad Max like closer to when Furiosa comes out, like maybe like a double or something, you know, when the new movie comes out. And then I was like, no, no, no. What is like the intersection of me choosing? Because I was obviously going to choose like an animated kids movie. Like it was like either going to be this or the Iron Giant or, you know. I'm shocked that you didn't choose Iron Giant. And so I'm like, what's the intersection of Mad Max Fury Road and the Iron Giant? And it's George Miller who wrote and direct Mad Max, wrote and directed this film, Happy Feet. Oh my God. In 2006. Halfway through watching this, you asked me, you're like, who wrote this? And I was like, I am not going to tell you and I need you to not look it up because I need to tell you on air that this is the the man who created Mad Max, who has directed all the, and wrote and, you know, created Mad Max. He wrote this movie and he directed this movie. That's crazy. Doesn't it make a lot more sense now? Yeah. Like desert hellscape. Antarctica, religious extremism, uh-huh. group think, uh-huh. you know, it's all kind of, yeah. the pieces are coming together now. I don't know why he chose the medium of horny penguins to tell this story, but I'm not mad at it. He got a stacked cast, too. <laughs> the voice cast for this is wild. I've heard, like, wildly differing opinions on if Elijah Wood does a good job in this or not. I thought he did good. I'm a fan. I thought thought it was fine, yeah. You know who's I hated? Nicole Kidman. Oh my god, her breathy. These penguins were already too turned on, and Nicole Kidman walks in with her breathy little porn star voice, and she exclusively calls the Hugh Jackman penguin daddy. Daddy. Not okay. Stop! Stop! Not not okay. Jail. Directly to jail. And the fact that she has an Oscar for this. Well, this movie has an Oscar. She doesn't have it. Well, doesn't, don't, don't you technically get an Oscar if you're part of the cast? I don't know if everyone this gets movie? one. I think you do. It's, that's how it works for best feature overall. I guess. If you were in the movie, you like, get an Oscar. That makes sense for, like, best picture. But, but why would it? Best animated picture? Yeah, why would it not? All of the voice cast gets an Oscar? I think so. I guess so. That's Like, that's, that would make the most sense, you know what I mean? That's a lot of gold. Or. Is it made out of gold? No, I'm sure it's, it's like, like, metal. Yeah. It's well, like copper, some shit. I wonder where Nicole Kidman proudly displays her happy feet best animated picture Oscar. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe next to her dildos. <laughs> Proudly. Proudly. It's her most proud Oscar. I, I would hope so. I'm sure she wears a terrible wig. Uh, Nicole Kidman's wigs. <laughs> a muse- I'm going to open a museum exhibit. That'd be perfect. You would make bang. And it's only wigs worn by Nicole Kidman. Yes, yeah, so you know how many gay people... That's gay people traveling to Mecca. <laughs> The Nicole Kidman wig. <laughs> the, the question is not what museum is going to let me display this, but which one is going to outbid the others because they're going to be fighting for mm-hmm. who gets to display my Nicole yeah. Kidman wig, wig exhibit. Yeah, you would hope that it would be the Academy Museum, but... I don't know. I'd like to keep my options open, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. I like the Guggenheim. That's modern art, though. This Do means like it, This doesn't need to be something like historical or... Mm. otherwise relevant maybe natural history no Un- american history unnatural mm. history well, she's not american actually though she's, and it's not her hair it's not her hair mm. Mm. let us know what you think and where we should display nicole kidsman's wig exhibit i also want to know what you guys think of happy feet because i watched this movie a couple of weeks ago yes. i had i was 
it was the day I got surgery. I had a 10 hour surgery on my face. Yeah. And then they, they let me go home the same day, which is kind of wild. Yeah, also crazy. But they had me pumped full of pain meds. <laughs> like, like I was ballooned up yeah. with like low dose opiates. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I get home and I'm like just sort of out of it and I'm, you know, just trying to get my bearings. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put on the first movie I see that doesn't look like it's going to be like strenuous to watch. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not in the mood to like do any emotional no. or mental lifting. Fair enough. So I just put on Happy Feet. It was on HBO. Yeah. It was the first thing I was like, play. And then I'm like 10, 20 minutes into it. I'm like, am I just on so many pain meds right now? Or is this movie kind of brilliant? It's a good movie. I'm it like, is certainly a good movie. There's a reason it won an Oscar. I was laughing. I was crying. Yeah. You said you were feeling moved to tears this watch. Yeah. I don't know if I'm just like hormonal or something, but just like the baby penguins. So cute. And then like the way that they're casting him aside. Right. Horrible. And it's like, pick a struggle. Yeah, he really can't get a break. Late bloomer, can't yeah, sing. Yeah, oh my god. This is definitely a movie that I think you watching it on Lotus Opiates is probably the right thing to do. I was watching this and I could have gone for being a little stoned. I think I would have been moved a little more. Yeah, and all and it would have held like, my attention. The concept of tap dancing penguins, I feel like it's just, it gets really elevated if yes. you're not sober. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I haven't seen this movie really. I think I watched it like a couple of times when I was a kid, but it wasn't like a, a staple or a favorite. Yeah, I think I watched it like once. Yeah, by any means. But rewatching it now, I'm like, damn, they packed a lot into this movie. And this movie is dark and a yeah. little scary. Yeah. Like, Penguin I'm isolation in, a, in an aquarium. He went crazy for a minute. Yeah. But then he just danced and they let him go. And then all the penguins danced and they solved the climate crisis. Because everyone. Truly impressive. That's all penguins have to do. Mm -hmm. It's actually their fault. We're, this movie is victim blaming. So this movie says if the penguins just learned choreography, uh -huh. we, as a, not even a nation, we as a globe could come together to be like, that is so impressive that we're going to stop <laughs> human yeah. pollution. I don't want to live in a world without penguins that's one of the lines <laughs> the real adult human man the unanimated mm -hmm. human adult man who said this yeah i don't want to live in a world without penguins because they did that dance so good yeah and the researchers uh -huh. captured it somehow and shared it with the un and mm -hmm. they said oh halt all fishing halt halt everything uh -huh. no more oil fracking nope no more no more fishing, no more deforestation. I think that if this movie had more of an impact in 2006, we would not be inching towards the doomsday clock nearly as fast as we did, <laughs> or we are. Um, this movie, anyone who enrolled in an environmental science degree program who was born between the years of 1996 and 2002, this movie is single-handedly responsible. The mm -hmm. UVM Environmental Science yep. Department owes reparations and thanks <laughs> to Happy Feet. They should be paying the director. Yeah, George. there should be the George Miller F Scholarship Fund. Yeah, he should for, have a building. For penguin, for penguin enthusiasts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can go to school for free. What do you think about penguins, generally? So, I, I do think that there was this weird craze, right? Mm -hmm. it, around this time, like the which makes sense. Like the mid 2000s, like 2000. Surf's up. Sur surf's, this movie, March of the Penguins. Yep. Surf's up. The Madagascar Penguins. Yep. There was like a penguin craze. Mm -hmm. And um, I always remember it struck me as really unoriginal during elementary school. If mm -hmm. anyone said their favorite animal was a penguin, I'm like, oh, so you've been to the movies recently? Pick a pick an original fa sure. favorite animal, yeah. you idiot. Yeah. Yeah, we all saw March of the Penguins. Uh -huh. It was great. But, uh -huh. <laughs> but do you have a family member who, like, is obsessed with an animal? Or maybe they're not even obsessed with an animal, but they mention that they liked an animal once and now everyone buys them something of that animal as a gift? Um, not particularly. I do have a friend that really likes penguins, though. That's my grandma. was, like, a penguin lady. Yeah. But I feel like it's always, like, the... The catch twenty two of being like, oh, I like, uh -huh. I like frogs, and then everyone just buys you frog yeah. shit for the rest of your life. Oh, so you're gay? <laughs> oh, you like frogs, so, so you're, you're gay. gay? Yeah, 
But you know who is gay is probably Mumble, even though this movie is aggressively heterosexual. Yes. This movie is uh, a queer allegory, and if you mm-hmm. don't like the movie Happy Feet, you're actually um, you're homophobic. homophobic. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Because th- this movie clearly outlines the queer journey of Easily. feeling different. Yeah. Having your mom who accepts you, but, will, but will step down to your patriarchal father, yeah. who's like a traditional values guy. Mm-hmm. So even though your mom like supports you in private, your dad like is outwardly like you're different and that's bad. Yep. And you sit in the back of the classroom and then they cast you away mm-hmm. once you start being yourself. Mm-hmm. Then you find your found family yep. of Latinx <laughs> penguins voiced <laughs> by Robin Williams yeah. slightly offensively. Uh-huh. And um and then all you have to do to get reaccepted by your community is do something that will save them all from yeah doom yeah yeah that's the only way Mm -hmm. and that's the moral of this movie is that if you're if you've been uh cast out by your community you have to save them in order Mm -hmm. for them to accept you you. do the most impressive thing you can think of Mm -hmm. otherwise you gotta you gotta yeah you're done yeah it doesn't matter what you do you're done yeah i haven't seen this movie since i was probably eight years old and i could say that i enjoyed it i love elijah wood in a in a role Mm -hmm. no matter what um I think he's a pretty solid voice actor. Yeah, I thought he was good in this. I think Robin Williams did not need to be voicing two penguins. And they were just similar enough that I was like, okay, you he could have just voiced the what what is the name of the, the species? Lovelace. Oh, I know that was his name, but what's the species of penguin that have the little hair? Oh, I don't know. Like rock hopper or something? Something like that. I don't know. But he could have just played the one with the rings around his neck. Yeah, absolutely. And he didn't need to be playing the Hispanic penguin. Yeah. Also, they didn't really need to decide that that one species of penguin had to all be Hispanic. Spanish. Like, they were like, oh, let's just decide that all these penguins are one race of people, but yeah. then not do that for any other kind of animal. No, I think that emperor penguins are just boring white people. I guess and I so. think they did a really good job of um, putting that to screen. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I... I, I, I You've been to the Boston Aquarium, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Those penguins are stinky. Stinky. And I'm going to give it to George Miller. They are horny. When yes. I, In my sixth grade field trip, those penguins were humping each other, and they had to be like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I was interested in, um, like, applying to be an intern there for, like, their, pretty cool. for, like, their social media team. Yeah. And as I was looking through... There was a big section of the application that was like, if you wanted to be one of the interns who d- goes in the penguin tank, mm-hmm. you had to answer all these questions. But like, I got to skip it because I was just applying uh-huh. for like a social media position. Yeah. But it was all of these, you know, can you tread water for 20 minutes? Can uh-huh. you whatever? But there was like height requirements too. Yeah. Like you couldn't Which be. Which makes sense. You had to be taller than five sang- five seven to work in the penguin tank. Shit. Is that wild? I was like, wow, discrimination. But I guess it makes, it makes sense because the water is deep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do love that exhibit there. I love that aquarium in general. I do love an aquarium. I'm more of a mystic girly. Really? Yeah. I haven't been to mystic in years. Are they, like, comparable in size? Uh, yeah, I would say so. It's also been a while since I've been to mystic, but I just remember feeling less sad there. The Boston Aquarium, maybe it's because I've walked by it a lot, like, for school and work, that just seeing the sea lions in the tank outside makes me really sad. That'll do it. I think the penguins have a pretty solid... Um, Exhibit, yeah. They've got space and stuff. Yeah, they've got space. I love matching them up because they all have their little bracelet on their arm. Uh-huh. And it's different colors and all the colors match their partner. Mm-hmm. It's very cute. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing the... Um, not that I think Boston has any, but just in the last five years, you've seen more articles about gay penguins. Yes! Love it. It's. I feel like those are fake, though, because that happened on... Parks and Recreation, yeah. and then I feel like everyone capitalized off the idea of gay penguins by, like, forcing that on them. We don't know. Also, ju- you're like, I bet you're just saying that. I bet yeah. they're not even really gay. Maybe I'm diminishing their wow, existence, though. Yeah, wow, yeah, Wow, I'm being a hater. You're I'm being sorry. homophobic. Jeez, wow. I'm just like Noah. Yeah, the re- just like the religious prophet. The religious extremist patriarch of this fascist penguin society. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's a lot. They covered just about every sort of topic in this yeah. movie. Basically, if you haven't seen Happy Feet, it's about penguins, emperor penguins, and how they love to sing. And primarily, they sing to each other to mate. Mm-hmm. And you have to find your heart song 
And once you and your mate are like singing a beautiful duet, it's time to make a baby. Yeah. And that's how that works. And so your their entire society is built on the structure of being good at singing and also fucking. Yes. And which, you know, it's the animal kingdom, I guess that sort of checks. But so these two penguins voiced by Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman are so good at singing that they make a baby like that in the first 10 seconds of this movie. It's the their chemistry is electric. And it's like, yeah, it's like immaculate conception type shit. And she goes off because all the lady penguins go off to go fishing and the male penguins huddle together during the like seasonal mm-hmm. change during the winter to hold the eggs in between their legs and do that thing where they like all stand in a huddle with and they like, you know, cycle through who has yeah. to be on the outside or whatever. And when Hugh Jackman is on the outside, he drops the egg. Yeah. Big and mistake. Huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so then when their son mumble is born hatched emerged yes. he is not a good singer but he's a good dancer yeah. he's phenomenal he can, dancer. he can tap his little toes yeah and basically they're like why is he so different and the dad sort of hides the fact that he dropped the egg mm-hmm. you know until later at the mm-hmm. you know in act two yes. where some some things are revealed Tis revealed but basically, it's all about Mumble, Elijah Wood's journey, mm-hmm. being a penguin that is not a good singer, but instead a good dancer. Oh, he's, Fabulous dancer. He's different. Dude, he, that is Billy Elliot right there. He's not accepted, mm-hmm. but he sure can't tap those toes. And some of his, like Gloria, it, she accepts him. She doesn't understand him, mm-hmm. but she accepts him. It's yeah. like, dancing can be cool. But it's primarily like the elder penguins who are like, that is the mm-hmm. devil's work. Yeah. That is the spawn of Satan, Mm -hmm. and dancing is not chill. Yeah. And eventually it gets to the point where all the other penguins have, like, grown up and are singing and have, you know, emerged from their downy feathers (laughs) into their sleek penguin exterior, and Mumble's kind of a late bloomer, bloomer, and he still has his downy feathers, Mm -hmm. and he's just not getting with the program of singing. And they sort of cast him away, but he has this Mm -hmm. budding interest in why there's a recession. Mm Mm-hmm. A the fish, fish recession. recession and he has to go along with his help of robin williams and the other they got actual hispanic people to voice the other hispanic penguins but they're like robin williams is already in the studio we might as well and he is known for doing slightly offensive impressions it's true and um so we're just gonna keep the ball rolling on that mm-hmm. one and they go and they basically want to find out where all the fish are going uh, the Lovelace is like a prophet because he has Lovelace. the soda ring around his neck. Yeah. He's also like every penguin you meet who's so horny, mm-hmm. you meet a new penguin who's horny. Right? Yes. Like the movie starts off with Nicole Kidman being like, Daddy. <clears throat> and you think it cannot get worse, and yet every turn it does. Mm-hmm. And it. it might hit a peak with Lovelace who mm-hmm. literally exits the scene to have an orgy. At one yes. point, a penguin orgy. Yeah. But he's like this prophet who can, who speaks from the beyond and answers questions, which he, mm-hmm. then, you know, we learn that he's sort of fake. But he has the soda ring around his neck. And I want to know if this movie is solely responsible for the clipping the soda ring trend. Honestly, probably. Of like the, of the mid 2000s, mm-hmm. like when everyone was obsessed of like, I'm pretty sure that the kind of plastic those are mm-hmm. dissolve anyways i don't think that's true like it's still bad yeah like it dissolves and it's bad but like yeah. like the instances of animals with soda rings around mm-hmm. their neck is like not as nearly big of an issue as like other kinds okay. of pollution gotcha. i don't know somebody can fact check me on that but, okay but i'm pretty sure this movie is fake news wouldn't shock me um Penguins, don't listen to us. And but. penguins don't speak English. So this movie is <laughs> fake news. <laughs> but they go and they want to figure out where the fish are and they figure it's these aliens. And mm-hmm. there have been a couple instances of alien abduction, which yes. are when humans take animals and put like tracking devices on mm-hmm. them for science and shit. And they eventually go, they meet these elephant seals who are like, mm-hmm. go this way. Mm-hmm. They go that way and they see the humans and they're all like, oh my God, that's so scary. And Mumble's like, I am so brave. I'm just going to go politely ask them to stop. What do I have to lose? And he goes and they put him in a zoo or mm-hmm. a, an aquarium. Yeah. Goes and, a little nuts. And he and he's like, oh my God, this is, this is wild. And they use real human people. They didn't animate the people. No. They use real human people to represent the humans who are watching him, which was a little, like, Uncanny Valley, like, weird. Yeah. Because I was, like, trying to discern whether they were animated or not. Mm-hmm. But I'm like... I was, couldn't tell for a while. I'm like, it's 2006, though. Like, 
Yeah. They did not have tech like that. No, they can't animate those yet. I think this movie looks kind of good, though. For 2006, like, absolutely. I was not mad at it. I'm not Better mad. than that new fucking Disney movie, Wish. Oh my god. Did a terrible job animating. Wish could learn a thing or two from Garbage. Happy Feet. Uh, but basically, he starts dancing and realizes that people, humans love penguins who dance. Yeah. And then he gets released because he's so good at dancing that they release him, but they put a tracker on him. And then the scientists follow him back to the colony and um, he's like, all of us penguins need to dance. Because when they come here, it's going to be a penguin genocide. Yeah. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is crazy talk. And Noah, the religious extremist patriarch, is like, leads a fucking chanting like a hymn. Yeah. They're like, all like, gr- it's in Greek. Yeah. Like, yeah, Greek humming. Uh-huh. And, um, and, but they very soon, as soon as the, those scientists show up, and are like, oh, these dancing penguins are kind of lit. Noah, he's tapping his toes yep. to save his he own He pulled ass. so fast. Which goes to show that usually those kind of guys, you know, are only self-motivated anyway. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But then the humans see how good the penguins are at dancing and they solve the climate crisis. Mm-hmm. Which is an awesome lesson to teach your children. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up? Hi, it's my mother, Jen, here to host her interim podcast segment, chocolate or vanilla she's gonna say two things we're all gonna say which one we like better jen is my mother she did not drop me on my head when i was an egg which is why (laughs) i am not very good at dancing um jen how are you today i am pretty good how are you guys not too shabby i'm sleepy we just finished watching this movie and it's like rainy out we're both like cozied up in blankets It made you sleepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, is there a theme this week? Yeah, so long explanation for kind of a simple theme. Right. But I was looking up Happy Feet, and I didn't know of this genre called jukebox musicals. Do yeah. you know of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they're like, Happy Feet is a jukebox musical. So, and I'm like, well, what's the difference between that and just a movie that has a really good soundtrack? Mm-hmm. You know, but I guess it has to be more of a musical. Like, I get it. Like, the characters so, are singing. Yeah. Yeah. I went uh, straight a little bit, and uh, it's just, I'm going to give you two songs that were in a movie, and you say which one you like the best, because you know how I love a good song, okay. especially yeah. a good movie song. Yeah. Love Great. that. Okay. Um, Dope. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. <laughs> vanilla. <laughs> chocolate. Uh, so, Happy Feet, yeah, Somebody to Love, or Boogie Wonderland? Boogie Wonderland and its placement in this movie is one of, like, the greatest musical moments in cinematic history. It's outstanding. Uh, so for both contextually within this film and just as a song, I am going to pick Boogie Wonderland. I'm also going to go Boogie Wonderland on this one. It made me want to shake my ass. Yeah. And see, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, some of these songs mean more to the movie, but I love me some Queen. So I'm going to pick somebody to love. That song That song always reminds me of Ella Enchanted. Yeah, that was exactly a good moment in that. Um, they obviously did it on Glee, too. So this one's for M from Dirty Dancing. Big girls don't cry or wipe out. Oh, I'll vote for wipe out. Yeah. Um, I love Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons, but Wipe Out was actually the first song because of that movie that I learned to play on the drums. So I'm gonna go for Wipe Out. Nice. I'll I'll go for Wipe Out too. My high school band did Wipe Out as that well. She is so good yeah. too. It's like such a football game thing. Um next one from the Twilight saga, A Thousand yeah. Years or Flightless Bird. Oh, oh, Flightless Bird American Mouth, so good. Yeah. The Twilight soundtrack has no business being that good. <laughs> truly, truly. And A Thousand Years by Christina Perry is fine. Like, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It was way overplayed back then, too, right? Yes. Was that yeah. for Breaking Dawn Part yes. 1? Yeah. I believe so. I, it was, uh, I think it was the one that they got married, right? Yeah, yeah it was like their wedding one. song. A flightless bird for me. So that so I'm gonna listen to that on the way home now. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Same. I'm gonna go flightless bird. Okay. Speaking of bird, from Lady Bird, uh, hand in my pocket, Alanis Morissette, or crash into me, Dave Matthews Band. Why am I like struggling to place where either of those songs like come up? Wait, what movie is this? Lady Bird. Not a clue. Yeah, same. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know if I um, unless I like googled it or watched it. But I guess I'll pick Dave Matthews Band. I'll go Alanis Morissette on this one. Okay, I'll I'll go uh, Dave Morse. Um, oh my God, Dave Morse. <laughs> Dave, Morse. <laughs> Dave, 
<laughs> Dave Matthews fan. Um, next one is from Pretty Woman. Uh, the song Kiss by Prince or Susasudio by Phil Collins. Did you intentionally pick that Kiss by Prince is also an, a pretty iconic moment in Happy Feet? Oh, I, I forgot. Uh, I didn't do it on purpose, but yeah, I did. Um, I... Yeah, I'll have to pick Kiss by Prince. Yeah, that's also an iconic scene in that movie. So I'll, I'll yes. pick Kiss. Same. I, I love Phil Collins, though, but I'll pick Kiss. Um, next one from the movie Across the Universe. Uh, Little Help from My Friends or Come Together. What is Across the Universe? Beatles. So it's like a Beatles movie. It's like all Beatles songs with like a really loose storyline, I think. Oh, interesting. I've never heard of or seen this. What are my options again? Um, get by with a little help from my friends or come together. Oh, come together. Come together easily. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Both awesome songs, though. So. Uh, next one from the Mad Max franchise. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle from Fury Road. Or we don't need another hero from Beyond Thunderdome. I've got to do Welcome to the Jungle. That oh, so iconic. Yeah, I'll go Welcome to the Jungle. I just rewatched Fury Road like a week ago, and it's so good still. Yeah, I I will go uh, from Beyond Thunderdome because uh, that was iconic back in the day. Uh, next one for you guys from Shrek. I'm a believer or all star. Both by Smash Mouth, obviously. Ooh. Um, I guess I have to do All Star. That's like the iconic Shrek song, I feel. I'm actually going to go I'm a Believer. Cause I, I liked that one a lot more as a child. Yeah, this is a tough one for me. I'll go with I'm a Believer, too. Which I think might be a remake of a monkey song, right? No, Probably. That's, that's Daydream Believer, if I got it. Oh, yeah. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Next one from the movie Nope, Walk On By by Dionne Warwick, or I Wear My Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart. Oh, I wear my sunglasses yeah. at night. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think both great songs, but I think Sunglasses at Night, definitely. Yeah. Next one from Cinderella Story, Best Day of My Life, Jesse McCartney, or I'll Be Edwin McCain. Oh, I'll Be is so much more iconic in the movie. I want to pick the Jesse McCartney song, like... Just because he was, like, the it boy, I feel. Like, he's the earliest memory I have of, like, a cultural, iconic, like, young male who everyone was just, like, universally attracted to, yeah. I feel. Um, but I I'll pick I'll Be because that song is just, like, objectively more powerful. Yeah, I'll also have to go I'll Be. Okay, um, so will I. So will I. Um, next one from Licorice Pizza. Um, Diamond Girl by Sales and Crofts or Stumbling In. The uh, duet, uh, Susie Quattro and Chris Norman. I think I know. I, yeah, I don't know either of these songs. Yeah, you would totally know them if you heard it. Okay, <laughs> I'll pick the, the duet. I'll pick the second one. Yeah, I like Susie Quattro, so I'll go for that one as well. Yeah, that one, you know, my love is a light and stumbling in. That one? Maybe? I don't, I don't know. know, Jen. Oh, man, I'll pick that one, though. <laughs> From Mamma Mia, um, Dancing Queen or Super Trooper? Dancing Queen, Dancing Queen. Really? Yeah. Actually, yeah, Dancing Queen. Yeah. I used to love Super Trooper, but Dancing Queen is... It's such a fun scene, but, like, uh -huh. ultimately... She said Dancing Queen. Being the Dancing Queen. Bean yeah. says that she likes Lay All Your Love on Me. Oh, she's right. <laughs> um, I'll go Dancing Queen, too, then. Uh, this is the last one from the Muppets movie. Oh, wait. Chocolate, strawberry, or vanilla? Chocolate. <laughs> vanilla. Uh, I'll go strawberry, because the last one is from the Muppets movie. Um, man or a Muppet? Uh, we built this city by Starship, oh. or Manana -na -na. beep beep ba dee dee. <laughs> oh, that's so good! But in my manner, I in my Muppet changed the course of cinematic history. It changed my life. Um, so I have to pick Man or a Muppet. I'm gonna go Manana. -na -na. Yeah, that is pretty iconic as well. I'll go uh, just just to mix it all up. I'll go with "We Built This City." I used to have a friend in high school who just break out into that song for no particular reason mm -hmm. <laughs> at any point. The Manamana song, or "We Built This"? No, "We Built This City." It's a good song. 
it would be more iconic if it, if it was the Muppets one. And with that, Jen, we are playing you off. Thank you, as always, and we'll see you next week. All right, I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Love you, too. Bye. I can't dance. I'm not a good dancer. Me either. Love to sing in my car. What would your heart song be? Oh, Hmm. Is it like it's a horny thing? Like it's it's gonna be my mating song? Yes. I feel like I don't want to just say Greta Van Fleet because they're my favorite, but I do do a lot of like Josh screeching, and I feel like that is pretty like indicative of who I am as a yeah. person. And very some, penguin coded as well. And if somebody could get down with like some hor- horrendous screeching, what song? Um, I mean, probably just like a classic like Safari song is pretty mm. pretty good. But I'm I'm trying to think like what would. I don't know if I, like what would my mating song be. Mine's mm-hmm. Judas by Lady Gaga. Oh my god, that's a really good one. <laughs> There's also the song Cheeks by Only Fire. Judas would be the one that I'm that's, walking around that's singing. That's really good. Thank you. I think I would be I would be Penguin Born, and I wouldn't be good at singing or dancing. And they would just what would you do? They would just kill me with a rock. <laughs> 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 You'd be a newscaster. <laughs> I'm like, like the I host. have the heart of a journalist. I'm like the host. I show up and I'm like, welcome to the stage, the 10 tapping toes of mumble. And oh like they need somebody to host the show. Yeah, you're you're the you're the, the MC, MC from yeah. Chicago style. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I could see that. That would be great. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I hope they have like penguin dancing with the stars after this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's very it's giving like the kids movie cop out plot point of like we're gonna save it with a talent show. It's always mm. that they're like saving the the dilapidated mm-hmm. theater yeah. or they're solving the issue by just like putting mm-hmm. on a talent show. Mm-hmm. When has that ever helped anyone? No one. Never. Mm-mm. But I feel like it has been planted in my mind time and time again as a child that like the way you solve something, like we have no more money for this thing, mm-hmm. is that you like put on a show. That makes no sense. No. You know how much money is in the arts? Not enough. Zero. Not enough to save the Antarctic. Simply not. Not gonna work. Yeah. But actually, these these scientists, <laughs> they're kind of onto something by being super into these penguins and saving them. Because if we can just outsource all acting talent to penguins, <laughs> we're gonna save on payroll like crazy. Absolutely. Every Broadway show, the ensemble cast, you don't need to pay guys for that anymore. You, <laughs> you can just get penguins. Yeah. I heard there's um, going to be penguins marching in a parade in Philly. Sometime. For real? I swear to God. Mm-hmm. Is that ethical? Not sure. <sighs> couldn't say. Really couldn't say. Probably not. I mean. How much is ethical in this world anymore? That's true. Not a whole hell of a lot. But I guess maybe if you made the argument that like the penguins are just hanging out all day anyways in the same climate. What's yeah. the harm in like letting them take a stroll? Exactly. But I don't know. I'm not a penguin lawyer. I don't know. Animals, animal rights lawyers must have a really tough job. Is that a real thing? Yeah, it must be. I think so. PETA? Mm, fuck they, PETA, but... Yeah, yeah, fuck PETA, but you know they've got some animal rights lawyers on their payroll. Yeah, they definitely do. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. I don't know. Let me ask Maya. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty certain. <laughs> Okay, can we talk about some of the, like, religious, like, language used? I'm not going to say, like, religious imagery, because it's really not, like, so much other than just, like, that one penguin Noah is sort of, like, weird and crooked and, like, standing above, you know, all the other ones surrounded by sort of his old and all-knowing apostles or whatever. But there's one specific clip of this movie. Like, it's a, you know, a five-minute segment of a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's basically when Mumbo is being officially cast away. And they use some incredibly specific, like, religious terms, where Uh up until that point, I was like, oh, that's just, like, a reading of it. You know, it's all about being different, feeling different than your community. But, like, this is the point where it really turns of, like, oh, no, no, they are specifically making an allegory about, like, religious extremism and indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because they they call it the Great Gwyn. Yes. It's, like, the penguin god. Yes. That they all pray to. 
And Noah, the main, you know, patriarchal yes. penguin, says that the Great Gwyn is displeased. Mm-hmm. And they call Mumbles dancing a pagan display. Yep. Which is mm-hmm. wild. That was crazy. And then, and then Mumbles' dad says that they need to be devout and sincere yes. in their prayers. Yeah, I heard devout really stood out to me. That was wild to me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That they were getting that granular with like using literal like religious language to describe penguin dancing. I loved it. I think that they should be calling people out, and if they're gonna call them out, might as well call them out in your penguin movie. This that shook me. Mm-hmm. George I wonder Miller, they, what are you on? I wonder if this like really stepped on some toes. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the reviews. The, that I was reading of it that were negative were like people saying that it was like corny to be using like the flashy getcha thing of like dancing penguins to try to relay your message. And also a lot of people criticized that the plot wasn't very coherent, which I felt like it was. I it was kind of solid. It was like a pretty A point to B point. If a child can follow it. Right? I don't know. But that, I had a harder time with the Big Lebowski. <laughs> Which certainly has more than... Yes. It, this movie has less than two stars on Letterboxd. Or, sorry, really? less than three, less than three. It's like 2.4 or something. That's crazy. Low. People hate this movie. Like, I didn't think... I don't think it's outstanding, but I think it's a solid movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it changed cinema forever. I agree with you, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. What else has George Miller done? Uh, mostly just... Most notably, Mad Max. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's like a... Produ- he's produced a lot of... Like and he didn't do the new Furiosa one? Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is? Okay, yep. great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he did the original Mad Max, he did Fury Road, and he's doing the new Oh, Furiosa. he's done, like, all of them. All of them, yeah. Oh, all of brilliant. Them. Yeah. Okay, good. That makes me feel better. I, I got scared for a second that I was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about Chris. Ugh. In it. Me too. And also, the, like, facial prosthetics that they're using. I'm like, can't you just cast somebody who looks like that? Yeah, there are right. plenty of guys who look like that. Yeah. You just find one. Yeah. I'm sure they're to... just as good as at acting as him. Like, yes. You know what oh I mean? Oh my god. 110%. But I'm I'm interested to see Anya Taylor Joy in that role because I don't think we've seen her in anything like that yet. Yeah. And that should be something. But I loved Fury Road. So I'm Love. so I'm like I'm excited because I'm like Yes. The bar is high. I'm I'm ready to be wow. pleased. Yeah. If it doesn't, though, we'll see. It's going to be a real stinker. But do we want to just... Yeah, get to our regular right schedule of programming? I don't want to say which penguin I'm going to fuck. No, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that that's something that's on the table. And I can talk about Muppets that I would fuck. Yeah. This is different. But not animated penguins. This not, is different. Not nearly. And honestly, who, has the, who has the best... Um, Heart song. Can I say something controversial? Yeah. I think as far as like, you know, animated animals that are given a little extra sauce. Yes. That make people feel a certain type of way, sure. you know, and you, you don't even have to be a furry to know yeah. that like, that that saber tooth tiger from Ice Age. Yeah. Hot. Hot. What is the name? Gil from Finding Nemo? The fish? Why they make the fish so hot? I'm sorry, that's weird. But this isn't. This isn't. They all look the same. No. Well, so the thing that the one thing that kind of stood out to me is that they did give the girl penguins titties. Oh yeah, with the contour of their. They gave they gave their little feathering contour, yeah. and I'm like, okay, you did not need to be giving the girl penguins a tits, bosom. Yeah. But honestly, I, I wasn't offended by like the slight sexualization of the girl penguins. It has to come. It like. Especially 2006 animated movie. I it's bound that. to happen, no matter what. And I, I was reading online that I guess they did want Mumble to, as he goes on his journey, to um, shed his feathers and become an adult penguin. Did he? He didn't then, really. He start, at the very he end, started we sort of start to see some of that yellow poking yeah. through. They wanted him to, at the end, be just like a fully realized but adult penguin. But uh-huh. then somebody made the argument that he he's easy to pick out. You know, yeah. all the other penguins, even, you know, if you're kind of dumb, or not kind of dumb, if you're not paying as much mm-hmm. attention and you aren't, like, listening to the voice, can't distinguish the voice acting, yeah. you know, 
having him look different mm-hmm. is very crucial. Especially for a kid's movie. Yes, for a yeah. child, right? Yeah. Um, but so so they redid part of it to make Smart. him be, you know, still have his gray feathers yeah, for a makes while. Sense. But I would say that the only the only animated animal that's kind of giving me like I could see somebody making a thirst trap for them is um the, the, the leopard seal. Really? You think the leopard seal? When he like exhales with his little nostrils and he was kind of like slithering through the, I mean he was, you know, the circle of life. He was trying to kill Muffle. Yeah. Um, but he's the only one I think could be kind of like caked up and, mm. and put to some truly put to like an ice spice remix. <laughs> I could see that for him. I think someone would do it more in a funny way for Lovelace, obviously, but uh-huh. and that would be hysterical, yeah. but yeah. If anyone has free time in their day and wants to make this and tag us in it, that would be outstanding. And then I'm going to have you pick between the two kinds of penguins we see have different mating rituals. The emperor penguins sing to each other. Yeah. And the smaller, I think they're called rock hopper penguins. Probably. They build a nest of rocks. And whoever's nest of rocks is the best gets the baddest bitch. I think building the nest, because some people are just born more talented. That doesn't mean that you're, like, a good person. The rocks show hard work. Show hard work and commitment. And you know what? That's what's more important. Oh, you sing good. Show, so what? And Lovelace, he had that massive pile of rocks. And that's why he was getting bitches. Mm-hmm. Because he was pulling a big scheme. But mm-hmm. that still proves yeah. that he had the... The brains. Yeah. You can work smarter, not harder. Exactly. But still, I don't, show that commitment. I don't want to, like, lay down on rocks, though. I bet as a penguin it would feel good. Maybe. Get your, get your like, blubber in yeah. line. Yeah, I think so. But, yeah, the rocks for me. Um, And this is a movie for your bros. Yeah, this is about your found family. Mm-hmm. This is about hanging out with your homies. Who are, you met, it's like the girl you meet in the bathroom bar. Yeah. And now she's one and of your like, best And you're like, I would die for you. I would step in front of yeah. a bus for you. Yeah. They exactly. see him dance and they're like, Yo! suddenly we're about to commit our entire life yeah. to following this man. But so you're, you've got your found family. You've got your bros over. Mm-hmm. You're watching this movie. What are you eating and drinking? I found this hard because like my initial reaction was just like sushi. They're Fair. eating. Fi- they're eating raw fish this whole movie. Yeah. And but then it's like humans are evil for mm-hmm. fishing. Mm-hmm. So then I was starting to Google like ethical snacks, and mm-hmm. then it was making me bummed that that's like not even real. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are ethical, they're selling at Whole Foods for like ninety fucking dollars for mm-hmm. a single granola bar, and it's all just about marketing to make it look ethical, and it's not really even any different. Truly. So then I was like, just commit to it and eat the sushi. Which is still bad. Fair enough. Um, and then similarly, I just remember um, I used to live near a Wegmans, which is like the premier Love. American grocery store. And there were these circular, like orb shaped bottles, blue orb bottles of vodka called Ocean Vodka. Love. And I was just like, this bottle is so cunty, I need to buy it. But then I like read the little label and it was like all about that their brand of vodka was like sustainable for the ecosystem and also like giving back to the communities of the place where they harvest the whatever. I don't even know. Okay, fabulous. An ethical vodka, if you mm-hmm. will. Which again, I'm sure is like not even a real thing and it's just marketing mm-hmm. and for show. But it's called Ocean Vodka and it's just a vodka. And I remember it was like kind of expensive, but like expensive vodka tastes literally like nothing, which is awesome. Yeah. So I think if you put that in um in like a mule and then you use like crunchy eyes. Great idea. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Um, I also think something on a similar page of crunchy ice, I think you make like a wine slushy. Ooh. Just because I think they're fabulous and like mm-hmm. Ugh, love just love I had i've a, just been craving wine i had a plum wine slushy recently oh, it was like a plum wine that was served in like a shaved oh, ice it? oh it was amazing oh um but yeah i think this movie is a good wine movie because do two glasses you'll cry i was crying at the very beginning yeah. mm-hmm. as soon as he's born and the dad is like stop doing that it's not penguin if your mom sees you do that i'm gonna be pissed yeah i was like welling up yeah Exactly. Oh my god. And that, the, just the way they animated those penguins is so fucking cute. Exactly. Ugh. But I, I think you let it out. I think you need wine. And yeah. you you and your homies all have a cry during this movie. Yeah. And I 
wish that I liked fish, but I don't like fish. Maybe I don't wish I liked fish after this movie. Yeah, true. Um, but I, the closest I could get with it would be shrimp. And I think that is also um, a little more ethical to eat. Yeah. Um, and I think that you do a wine slushy and a shrimp scampi. Oh, yeah. I love me some scrimps. I also, I'm not a seafood girly, but I love shrimp. Because yeah. shrimp is like the, what did it, well, chicken tu- of the sea. tuna is the chicken of the sea. Sure. But shrimp is the real chicken of the sea in the yeah. way that I just find it pleasing and palatable. Yeah, it's not too fishy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and then what would you follow this movie up with? Uh, so you have a really good answer. Pretty solid. You revealed your answer to me. I have like three loose he- pebbles in my hand okay. that I'm, you know, my lady. I'm trying to <laughs> seduce you with my three loose pebbles. Okay. But my first one was like, what's another instance of like two horny people like singing different songs back and forth at each other in like pitch perfect when they're doing the riff off? Whoever wrote there was I swear to God there was a scene in here that resembled the rip off when whoever wrote Pitch Perfect saw this movie and was like what if it was about college acapella yeah and that's what started mm-hmm. the budding idea yeah of Pitch Perfect so Pitch Perfect was definitely like my first concept not a bad idea Aaron Brockovich if you want to dive straight after this into uh Love that environmental movie. activism Love. but then ultimately I do think that you should watch the TV series Blue Planet. Mm. I took a class in high school called marine ecology Mm -hmm. and it was taught by a teacher who was on his last year before retiring Mm -hmm. and it was the last semester of his last year and it was the most bullshit class like it was not it was not any of the like hard you know legit sciences of course so every every day he would just put on blue planet and that was our entire curriculum brilliant was blue planet it was awesome Um, love it and I specifically remembered the episode about the arctic and about the uh, elephant seals Mm. specifically being just phenomenal okay. um so definitely check out blue planet that's also really great to watch if you're stoned yes i was just thinking smoke about i'm like fat, I'm gonna, i was like i'm gonna do that later smoke a fatty and watch the elephant seal episode of blue planet Hell yeah. by god are you gonna have a good time <laughs> and i think that that would be continuing the joy you know aaron brockovich that's gonna keep you down yeah blue planet you're gonna be like wow Hell yeah. But it is still, you know, it does remind you that these things are endangered and at risk yeah. and that, you know, humans have an effect on this. But it is also like, look at how fucking crazy elephant seals are. Yeah. Wild. Love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you? Um, I'm going to say Okja. Amazing. Which is just a brilliant, brilliant movie in general and very much on the same wave of animal rights mm-hmm. and um, pollution and just eco-terrorism, basically. And done a bit. A bit better with more, yes. of, a, more of a yes. vision. Yes, I would say. absolutely. It's more Wong Jun Ho, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. More of an audience yeah. in mind. Also, uh-huh. Tilda Swinton playing a twin of herself. Robin Williams playing two different penguins. Flop. Tilda, Tilda Swinton, Swinton playing, playing a twin twins. of herself. Solid. What's the opposite of flop? Like, mm. like if you could say gag, like, gag, flop, and gag. Mm-hmm. But I want to. I want yeah. to start with F, like fucks. Mm-hmm. But, yeah mm-hmm. like more girly yeah no twin tildas is oh. gag city another plane has hit the twin tildas <laughs> <laughs> mr president <laughs> oh my god i i would i was almost on the edge of my seat trying to decide whether to do my movie playlist of people who play twins of themselves but we've done a lot of them on here we've done the parent trap we've done okja We've done the social Facebook network. One, yeah. 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 That's not, so that's a lot of them. That's most of them. It's, that's hard to break through. Haven't the done There Will Be Blood yet. Is no. that one on there? Well, sh- don't spoil it. Oh. That's so. the twist. <laughs> I just watched the movie uh, Prisoners by Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve. And um, it, you see the scantest profile of a shadow of a reflection of Paul Dano and Henry and I knew nothing going into the movie uh-huh. other than just like yeah. the two men who are on the front poster. Uh-huh. And at the same time, both of us are like, is that Paul Dano? <laughs> <laughs> like literally we both clocked him. <laughs> That's Wild. Amazing. I mean, who else were they going to get to play a, a little squirrely little rat boy? Yeah. Like, you know, there's no one else to do it. What are you going to rate this movie out of 10? I'm going to give it a six and a half. Okay, yeah. I'm going to give it a solid seven. Yeah. It really tickled me. It's not a kid's movie that I, like, remember nostalgically. No. So there's a lot of kid's movies that I love, but I'm like, is that just because I harbor a thing in my heart? 
Yeah. And I know for a fact that happy feet is not the case. No. Like, my my seven is an objective seven. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a lot higher than I think I'd give a lot of other kids' yeah. movies. Yeah. I think it's great. I think it had a vision. I think you're right. And I think that, like, telling the story of climate change, pollution, mm-hmm. the human effect on the destruction of the environment, patriarchy, blind faith, religious extremism, through the medium of horny penguins, mm-hmm. that's brave. That's solid. And the fact that it won an Oscar. Brilliant. Amazing. Yeah. Love to see it. I made a mistake the last time I started my little exit intro, and I said that I wanted to get to 300 Apple reviews. So I was saying, we had like 70 or something it's like that. It's 100. So yes. We're close to 300 on um, Spotify, but I care more about the number. So for me, for Dare December, if by the end, I, I don't believe that you guys can do this. I don't even believe that enough people have listened this far into this podcast to make this happen. But I will add words to our intro theme song. That is the price. I it's you probably, guys probably don't you're probably actively fighting against me because you don't want that. But it's the prize that I've come up with. If you can get to a hundred reviews on Apple Podcasts mm-hmm. and boost our star rating up to a four point nine mm-hmm. on Spotify. Those so no matter what platform you're listening on, mm-hmm. and I, you know what I do? It's aggressive, but I take people's phones. Like, I take my dad's phone, yeah, and, and I, like, I, I manually go look up my podcast, and I give it stars, because yeah. I'm... It's important. It, it's, yeah, it's great for the algorithm. It's why I'm begging you to do it. I'm also begging you to send us in your requests. DM us. We have an email address. All the links to all the shit is in the description below. Um, we love you all. Thank you for listening, and goodbye and good night.